I altered this Altoid tin to house an accordion book that I was making for a project for Makers Creative Collab. However, my time went way over the allotted time for those videos. So I'm going to go ahead and release this video and I have made something else for that Makers Creative Collab that will be in February. So I hope you'll come back to my channel and view the second maybe the third project that I make for this creative collab. My name is Pig and I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I am very new to this venue, if you will. I've been doing it for about a year now and I like to experiment and learn and I hope you will subscribe to my channel and follow along with me as I engage in new and different things. There are some other places that you can find me on the web. So this tin came to me as a gift from the company that I work for, and their logo was on top of this white tin. I pulled that off, and I'm just scratching that up with some fine sandpaper to rough it up so it will take the medium that I would like to put on it. This picture came out of the Smithsonian Magazine. And I wish that I could find the verbiage or the story that went with this piece of art because when I really looked at it closely, I was surprised at the content of it. There's two little hands on this lady's shoulder, and of course you don't see the individual standing behind her. So it is very intriguing, very interesting, and I thought about not using it because I didn't know the story behind it. But that became the story, is wondering what was going on in this photograph. So I will be utilizing it with that thought in mind. So I'm just trimming it to kind of fit the, the tin. And I use the tear ruler to make one side messy and then diagonal it, a diagonal cut on the top or a diagonal tear on the top to reveal more of the tin. And on that tin, I am placing these book pages. And this is out of a book that I've been using on multiple projects. It's an older book that was aged and the color of the pages is delightful to say the least. And I like using it. And they're very brittle. They almost fall apart in your hands. So they must be collaged to, to withhold or to stand up, I suppose I should say. So I'm getting them all laid down and getting a nice coat of Mod Podge. And then I shall lay this lady on top. But before I lay her down, I would like to do a couple of things. One, I'm going to trim up the outside edges of the tin just to kind of be clear on what I'm working with. And I'll remove any of the edges that are a little rough with my sanding block and some fine sandpaper. And once that feels smooth, I'm ready to glue my lady down. But before I glue her down, I'm going to pull out some vintage photo ink and just antique her up a bit more. So I will be going around the outside edges and just adding a little bit of that vintage photo, introducing it into this picture. And I think that looks much better. So I shall get her put into place and I'm just adding another little coat of glue and water mixture or the homemade Mod Podge substance and we'll glue her down and coat over the top of her as well.
and I'm content with that. And I want to darken up. I don't want this to be a white tint. So I'm pulling out the black gesso, and I'm going to go over the entire tint. I'm going to go around all the outside edges, the bottom, the inside. Everywhere that is exposed is going to be coated with this black gesso. And that was truly the purpose for sanding it in the first place, just to make sure that all of this gesso will stick and provide me with a good background or a good piece of substance to, to work on. And I paint this a little bit, let it dry, paint another part of it and let it dry. In there. It's completely coated except for the inside here. We'll get that finished quickly and move on to the next step. So for the front, I have decided to use some stencils that were created by PM Artist Studio and they have a wonderful array of stencils that all were created by Patricia and Mariah and I'm very thankful to have the sets and I will just be placing those on top and kind of masking off where I don't want that modeling paste or texture paste to go and pulling it through that stencil with my credit card. I lost that footage. I don't know where it went, but you understand what I did. And then I take my sanding block and just give it a nice fine coat and I'm coming back with just another piece of fine um, sandpaper because the sanding block just didn't seem to really do what I wanted. And I want to make sure that this does not um, cake off or flake off. So I'm just taking off all the ridges, so to speak. And now that that's down, I want to add a little color to it. And I'm going to start with a gray-green. And I thought my finger would be good for this, but it came on pretty, pretty strong. So I'm using a dry brush and we'll be dry brushing the rest of that green into place. And where it had gone on rather thick, I just took a baby wipe and removed some of the paint. And I'm happy, much happier with how that looks. I'll get the green off her face there. I'm going to add some green to the sides, to the back. And we'll just continue on with that, with that same color, just here and there. I want it to kind of look like a patina that's coming through, perhaps. So I'm going to add another color on top of it here in a moment. We'll come back in with some raw umber. So it's starting to come together. And I'm just covering any little blank spot on the edges. I don't want this to look contrived or real rigid. I want it to be kind of that organic feel to it. And we'll hit that once again with just a little bit of sandpaper. So, yeah, typical process. We're putting paint on and then removing it, putting paint on and then removing it. And now I'm going to come back 
in with burnt umber. I think I said raw umber before in the video, but I did indeed use burnt umber. There's a little difference in the color. This burnt umber has a, I think it has more of a reddish tone to it actually. So I came back in with, with that and just dragging that with a dry brush across the front. And once again, removing any excess with that baby wipe. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to flip it over and add some of this color to the rest of the box. And the rest of the tin. I'm going to put some more green on, a little more of the dark color. And now that we have that done, and that is dry, I have this texture paste that was um, used in a patina kit, and it is a bronze color, and I'm utilizing that. And all of the links for all of the products that I use will be in the blog. So if you want to head over to my website and click on my blog, you will see the latest blog at the top, and it will be about this process and all of the links for the paint and the texture pieces, texture paste, pastes. What, where did that come from? The texture paste will be in that, in that blog. And they are... Amazon affiliate links, so I do make a small commission off of those just to to give you a heads up, but it does not cost you any more to purchase. They just send me a few, few pennies, and I am also using the green. And if you watch me make the idea journal, you saw me use a lot of this green and a lot of the turquoise that is in in this line. And I'll link that idea journal up above. So if you want to go check that out, you can. There's, I think there were about nine videos in that because I put a journal together with uh, six or seven different um, folders that were created tabs inside that journal. So it was a fun project. And then we stitched it together with a Coptic stitch. So you, if, if it interests you, you can find it up above or in my journal playlist. So the Altoid tin is starting to be transformed or is starting to get towards the end of its transformation. Just adding some additional color to it here and there. And I think we all do this. We just work with the piece until it meets our expectations. And once I have all of that color laid down, I'm just taking the ink pad in black. It's a stays on black ink pad and just going around the outside edge. And there you have the inside that is ready to house our accordion booklet. And I'm just going to rub over the back with the black as well. And now that that is complete, I want to coat the entire outside of this tin with the Mod Podge hard coat. I find that that gives a really nice protective cover on all of the projects that I do for the most part. And I, it does have a little bit of a shine to it, but not so much that it's glaring. And I 
think it just protects. It's actually advertised for furniture, but you can find it in any of the hobby stores or you can order it online. And once again, if you head over to my blog, you'll find all the links for everything that I used in this project over there. And I'll let that dry. And now I'm going to decorate the inside of this lid. It's something that when this is opened, I want there to be a bit of interest there. I'm utilizing a tea-stained piece of linen. I'm going to trim that down to size and glue that into the back or into the lid. And I'm sitting that in the bottom, but I, I wind up not using it there. I glue the accordion book in there, so it's irrelevant. I have a piece of lace that has little flowers on it, so I'm going to cut around the flower on that lace and just use that little lace flower. I also have a coffee filter out of a hotel stay that I shall be using. And I want to have a button on here as well. Now the whole thought process behind using that lady on the front was to try to figure out or to wonder or to make up our own story about those hands that are laying on your shoulder. So I also want to pull in a piece of handwriting that just kind of maybe takes that thought process and puts it into words, if you will. That's a picture of my mother when she got engaged to my father. That was her engagement announcement. But I want handwriting. So this is a letter that uh, I've made a bunch of copies of letters that my dad wrote to my mother during World War II, and I'm going to pull some of his handwriting out and use that to tuck underneath that coffee filter and that piece of lace. But it seems really um, stark to me, so I shall glue my linen in and let that dry, and I'm going to set that aside after I get it glued in there. And I'm going to get to work on this piece of copy paper that I copied that letter onto. I'm pulling out my iron and some candle wax and a grater, and I'm going to grate some candle wax onto this piece of fabric. Or, I'm sorry, not onto the piece of fabric, but onto this piece of paper. So I have it laid up there on my, my cutting board. You don't want to iron on top of your countertop because you could buckle it, or I have a craft mat laying underneath that uh, piece of paper that I lay down, and I didn't want to buckle my mat. So I'm pulling some parchment paper in. I'm going to lay the tea bag and that piece of paper on my parchment paper and grate this white candle over the top of both. And when I get enough candle wax grated to cover them, I'll flip that parchment paper in half and cover both and pull the iron in that is on a high setting with no steam and just iron that until all of that wax is covering and then we'll let those cool down and you'll be able to see that that has created a transparency in that piece of paper so it's not that glaring white anymore. So we'll lay the coffee filter down, lay the piece of paper down and you can see the coffee filter and the linen through the paper now which is a must, much nicer representation of that handwriting. And now I'm just taking um, a micro pen and writing the word creative on it and just kind of 
Well, actually, I think what I'm doing here is defining what this was made for, and I'm going to glue it onto the back of the book, which it turns out not to be for what I've glued onto the back, but that's okay. At least I know what I intended, correct? I'm going to use just a little piece of um, paper bag and glue that down, and then we'll glue the copy filter on top of that, and that will be on the bottom of, of this tin. And that says Maker's Creative Collab in February of 22. And be sure to come back in February to see what I post as a video, because it's not this. It's going to be something completely different, and I'm pretty excited about what I've decided to do. And I am going to be doing that this weekend to get it ready. Uh, you know, here I am at the end of January, and this is the first thing that I made. And that is the inside now. I think that looks nice. And we'll glue the accordion booklet in. And I will show you here in just a second how that accordion booklet turned out. That is it sitting there in the right side. A little close-up of the inside of the tin, and as that accordion booklet is pulled out, it stays inside the tin, it is adhered to the inside of the tin, and it just comes in and out. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate those of you that already have. Your likes, your comments do genuinely help promote my channel. I appreciate that greatly. And once again, head over to my blog and Check out everything that I used for the creation of this tin. I appreciate it. The accordion fold is linked above. Enjoy. Bye for now.